Hey there. On a recent trip to the local recycler, I found this monitor in the e-waste bin. And even though I didn't know what exactly it is, I noticed that it had switches for TTL and analog and a bunch of controls on the back and a nine pin connector. So I thought that this is probably not a standard uh, VGA monitor, but something that hopefully could do CGA or EGA. And I've been wanting some CGA display device for quite a while. So I took my luck and brought it home. And as you can see, it's working, though there is a problem with it. And uh, it's obvious that the monitor shows an image that is way too much tilted to the right. And even though there are controls, which became actually perfectly smooth after I sprayed them with a lot of contact cleaner, um, they do not allow me to move the picture all the way to the left to make it centered. So I have the dial turned all the way to the left, but it's still not enough. Everything else is working fine, like uh, vertical control, vertical size. You can really like, there's a lot of range on this one and it's still a bit scratchy as you can tell by the bouncing and you can also like go really tiny. But uh, yeah, brightness works though it like confuses my webcam. But yeah, everything works except for the horizontal position. And I've tried it with my trusty Gridcase 3 computer, which I also found an electronics waste quite a long while ago. But um, yeah, so it, it produces an output signal that is CGA. And um, yeah, everything is really fine. And in fact, the monitor's CRT seems to be in pretty good condition. Like the colors are all terrible for, because of the camera, but you can see that uh, it's very sharp. I think the brightness is okay that is left. Um, and uh, yeah, also it does render brown correctly. So it's not like a, you know, just a faint yellow. So it's working perfectly fine, but there is no way for me to get the image in the right place. And I've actually tried a different computer that I have, a Compact Portable 3, which also outputs a CGA signal, but the misalignment is exactly the same. So I guess something is wrong on the inside of this monitor. And I don't know a lot about CRT monitors, but I think the fact that the control works, but the range is off, maybe it's something that has degraded due to age like a capacitor or a resistor. Um, I don't think anything is fundamentally wrong in the monitor, but uh, yeah, so I probably have to crack it open and take a look whether I can see anything that is off. And I just know enough about CRT monitors to know that there are a lot of dangerous voltages on the inside, so I'll be careful and I hope that whatever I need to fiddle with is this panel on the top here. Let me show that. That has uh, the dials and also these neat indicators for what mode it is in and i hope that once the case is off this is far enough removed from the actual you know nasty high voltages that you have in a crt monitor such that i will not get myself shocked so let's see how that goes all right so let's first take a look at this monitor i think it's fair to say that this dude had it a bit rough because it was basically face down in the e-waste container you can see there is a bit of marking down here and on the side there are some scratches even though my poor light kind of makes it hard to tell also i already spent quite a while like rubbing it with uh, window cleaner to get all the like scuff marks there were a lot of like black chips on the side uh, because it was rubbing against other stuff that was tossed into that container. It cleaned up pretty nicely, though it didn't get perfect. There are some marks left like this. I tried a magic eraser, so now here it's a bit lighter actually. It's pretty yellowed on the back, but overall I think the condition is quite decent. And uh, this is the back of the monitor that I saw that caught my eyes. Let me move this a bit closer so you can see the various controls that it has. There's like the power switch, a bunch of dip switches, which I later learned after finding the manual online that this allows you to control the color that you can display when you turn it into text mode, where it basically tries to emulate a mon monochrome monitor by showing everything that isn't black in the color that is dialed into. And currently it's set to yellow. There is a manual switch, so if you feed it a non-IBM compatible RGBI signal, this allows you to configure how the signal is interpreted. And I don't know exactly when this is needed, but maybe there are some, you know, 64 or 16 color display modes uh, from 
non-IBM CGA graphics uh, that, that this can display then. Here's the TTL to analog switch. And as far as I understand, uh, the analog might be used for EGA. I'm not sure. Um, TTL is for CGA for sure. This is the input cable and actually, where is it? Yeah, it was attached to the monitor and it was screwed in and the monitor was resting on it. So I was a bit uh, concerned that it might have been, you know, damaged, but I think this is built pretty well. Like this doesn't wiggle at all and uh, the cable is working fine. So luckily no damage was done there. And um, yeah, so that's all pretty cool. And of course, power connector. And uh, yeah, so it's an NEC JC-1401P3E, which I found to be the first uh, monitor to use the multi-sync name. And oops, if I tilt it back, you can actually see on the bottom, it, uh, yeah, it uses the multi-sync label here. So I think <clears throat> as far as I learned, it was quite a rare feature that you would have a monitor that can work with a bunch of different graphic adapters uh, because the standards were so different. And I think the main distinguishing element is that it can sync as low as 15 kilohertz video signal up to 31 or 32. So I think I've seen people build adapters that work, make it work with VGA even doing uh, 640 by 480, though I'm I might have to go back and check this, but there is also cables available that make this one work with an Atari ST, which apparently was groundbreaking at the time. I don't have such a cable. I do have an Atari ST, but since I just picked this up uh, a couple days ago, I didn't get to experiment with that. But um, yeah, I mean, one cool thing is that if you look at the bezel, it's quite hefty, especially by today's standards. But one good thing is that it actually, as you can tell, like the tube, doesn't stick out. It actually protects the tube pretty well, which also meant that when I picked it out, it had some scuff marks from rubbing against other components, but when it was handled, it didn't actually manage to scratch the surface. So the CRT is actually in pretty pristine condition. So that is really quite nice, which all the more makes it important for me to try to fix that monitor. And which in fact means I can do something like this to show you the top. And if I don't move it that much, it's now resting on the bezel and I won't scratch up the, the CRT. And behind this flap, here are the magic controls, nicely labeled too. And uh, as I said, after a bit of contact cleaner, these work pretty well. Um, <clears throat> so you have basically this one is for text mode, which means if you enable it, it will show every color but black in exactly that color. Um, this is a width switch, which I don't know exactly what it's needed for. And then you have the dials for brightness, contrast, uh, vertical size, vertical position, if I'm not mistaken, horizontal position and horizontal hold. So uh, vertical hold, sorry. Yeah, and it closes nicely. And I guess you can tell that this uses a different plastic than the rest of the case, or at least the rest of the back, because this looks pretty beige or like cream. This certainly has yellowed a lot, even though the camera makes it look slightly less terrible. And the front is also matching this. So I guess whatever this is didn't age as well as everything else. So yeah. Oops. It's actually, I think the manual said it weighs something like, uh, what is it? 14 pounds, 15 pounds, so like seven kilos. Or was it actually 10 kilos? I don't know. But it's, you know, given its size, it's quite hefty. But I think it's also well built. So maybe we'll see that once the cover comes off, which shall be the next step. All right, so let's try to get this thing open. I don't have a service manual for this, so I'll basically playing, be playing it by ear. But I got this gross towel, which is what I, <clears throat> what I also use to clean the monitor with. So let's see where we start. So I guess first thing, Oops, yeah, that worked. <laughs> All right. First thing is to remove the stand I would take. So I've done this already when I was cleaning it. So move it all the way to the back, which makes it rotate. And then there are actually, uh, I can show this once they're off. There are two arrows. There's one here and then there's this one. And when they're aligned, uh, the foot just comes right off. So that is easy. No screws needed here. Then there is the base, which uh, unscrews with two giant flat hat screws.
Magnetic screwdriver. Maybe not the smartest thing to use on a monitor, but I think it's far enough. I, I won't go anywhere near the CRT with this, so that should hopefully be okay. All right, and the base comes off. Let's put this over here. And in order to not lose the screws, I will use this neat magnetic I fix it mat where I can put them and I actually move them around. Uh, I found this incredibly useful. It's also dry erased, so even though in this case it's pretty obvious what they are, but you can just move right like stand or whatever it is. And especially if you take out boards that have a lot of screws in different positions, I find it very useful to just draw like a rough outline of the board and then like dots where the screws go and then put them there. And it actually makes it a lot harder to mess up, you know, especially if you work on something over the course of, you know, like a couple hours or even let it sit for a couple days, you can pick it back up. But anyways, that's the end of that ad roll. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with them. It's just a good product. So I want you to know about it. Okay. And uh, yeah, first thing I see there are Phillips head screws, four of them. That seems to be all I can see. I hope there's nothing behind this nice sticker. I don't want to break this. So let's just see what happens. And, uh, oh, sorry, quite beefy. So let's see. Um, so here's actually how I'm going to do this. Okay, there's not really much space for me to draw this, but so I'll go like this, indicate that this is basically the shape of the monitor and then just in the corner a go mark x marks the spot and then whenever i take out a screw just okay these are actually long enough that this doesn't really work but um, you get the idea all right Please cross your fingers for me that it is really as easy as I hope it is to get to these controls because I really don't want to deal with discharging the CRT. I do not have a tool for that and there is this crocodile uh, crocodile clip on a screwdriver and then go under the um, under the anode cap thing but you know at best it just like short circuits the CRT which I think can't be really good for it. And uh, so, yeah, if I can just avoid getting anywhere near there, that'll be great. So, let's see, does it just lift off? Would be nice. I mean, this seems to be a pretty decent monitor. Like, I hope it's well engineered to also be serviceable. Okay. Ah, careful not to snap the neck. That would be a really sad ending to the story. All right. Ooh, it smells old. All right, put this to the side. So what do we have here? This camera angle is really not going so well. All right, so let me get things out of the way so I can turn this. All right, so I can see. Oh, that's actually quite nice. A lot of the stuff is shielded. Uh, so my clumsy fingers won't get anywhere in harm's Wait, oh, there's the scary anode cap. <laughs> All right, or at least it's scary to me. You know, if you don't know what you're doing, these kind of things, treat them with respect. I certainly don't really know. So the usual don't try this at home applies, but you know, here I am trying it at home. Oh, this wasn't fixed, sorry for that. So there's this panel, and I wonder, can I get to here. It actually, on the inside, it looks fairly clean. It's a bit dusty, but I mean, what would you expect from a monitor that, you know, is some 30 years old? All right, so there are the connectors in this panel, and I wonder... Oh, like this might just... I see there are some mounting holes here. Actually, let me get 
gloves, at least I'll have the impression that I'll, you know, have a layer of insulation. These are probably not certified electronics gloves, but it'll be better than not having any at all. So I've lowered it a bit and you can see there are these screws and this thing is already pretty loose. So I hope that this is all that's needed. So what I hope I can do is take out this panel and then maybe see whether any of the components on there, which I guess will just be resistors, either measure off or, um, you know, show some signs of having degraded. Okay, so I'll put this also here. And here I don't really need to draw any things on it, but just put the screws on there. And uh, yeah, let's see. Can we get this out? Hopefully without breaking anything. Just slides right out. And ha, huh, I wonder, is this thing, I have to look up what that is. Is that a capacitor? If it is, I would just immediately guess that capacitors are bad over time. But I'll, I mean, I'm recording this, but I'll take a picture with my phone just for reference. Even though all the, the connectors seem to be all different, but maybe there's still the question of which one is left, which one is right. So having a picture with the cables and the colors clearly visible will help with the reassembly. And just to give you uh, caught in the towel. Okay, this was a very inefficient way of putting it. But yes, yeah, so if you have a look inside, probably hard to tell, but there isn't a giant amount of dust in there. And it, you know, overall, I see a lot of connectors. Everything seems to be quite, you know, modular and serviceable, though I really hope I don't have to descend any further than this. So what I'll try next is moving these connectors. They clearly look like something that is meant to be removed. Fully disconnecting this will allow me to probe at it with a multimeter and get the monitor out of the way. So I'll have much lower risk of, that was, yeah, I don't think I bent anything. This looks okay. Camera not wanting to focus, but okay. Let's put this here. Let's put the monitor somewhere where I will not step into it. And uh, yeah, then we'll take a look at this this component. All right, so to begin with, there are a bunch of more Phillips screws. I really like that it's Phillips and not, um, you know, uh, Torx or whatever safety bits you might find. And at this point, I think it's fair, oops, to bring this over so I can record where these things go. So I will not lose them later on. Oops. All right, so what does the panel look like? There are these two, these two, and uh, yeah, I guess yeah, the light is not great if I do it that way. Yeah, so yeah, I'll draw a rough representation. There's the small board, there's the large board, which kind of overlaps, screws here and there. They might actually all be the same, so it doesn't really matter, but I feel like there's just, if I'm wrong and they're not the same, then there's less chance for me to screw this up. Big round of applause for that one. Oops, sorry, I'm breathing into the microphone. Take a different screwdriver, which actually grips these a lot better. All right. It seems like they are the same. Oops. 
Nice thing is disassembling this means I could also give it a wash, so it'll just be even cleaner. It was kind of hard to clean this because you have the small controls, uh, the dials. I didn't want to flood this with cleaner, but it was also pretty hard to rub around there, even with a you know um, Q-tip thing. So and it just comes off. Yeah, and you can tell. Ooh, yeah, you can tell there's some suit. Or what do you call it? Yeah, so. I guess some cleaning could be done. I don't need to disassemble this further. Oh, I guess the flap can be removed, but I'm not sure if I want to stress this poor plastic even more, but you're just, it's etched into the plastic. Um, right, cleanliness we can attack later. Um, all right, so the way the, this was mounted, oh, and it's even like everything is labeled on here too. So uh, yeah, NEC control PWB PWE 125A is the model number that is up here. And uh, the LEDs are working, all the switches work. So it's really H center here. So it's this control that I'm interested in. So at the current position, it's all the way to the left. So you can see here, this is the uh, vertical center, no, sorry, horizontal center control. And as far as I can tell, there's just this massive ground plane from pin four. It goes into the potentiometer and it goes straight back into L3. So there isn't much that can fail. I don't know what the spec is for this um, potentiometer to see whether it's faulty, but the fact that it just basically works um, within the range, but the range seems off, suggests to me that either maybe you can just add resistance to it or it's the receiving end in the monitor that um, has a failed component so that while this one outputs a valid range, the monitor no longer interprets it correctly. But since I don't want to fiddle with that right away, I'll just get a multimeter and see what the, the readings are for this. So let me get that. This, so put the multimeter here. So I just, go to the largest range and just see what we get. So looking at this, these two are connected to the same thing. So this doesn't, so I guess I need to measure between here and there. All right, so this is clearly too high in the range. Okay, so this seems to be 11 kilo ohms. Let's see what happens if I turn it all the way to the other side so we get the range. Oh, so now it's zero. All right, hmm. well, that doesn't bode well. Let's go back to the other side. Or actually, maybe it does. Okay, so now it's apparently larger. I think it wasn't even all the way to one side. Okay, so it's between 20 kilo ohms. Let's see whether I can arrange my hands in a way that I get a reading. Uh, I guess I can just use the pins down here. All right, I guess this way I can do it. All right, so there's our reading as I'm turning it. Okay, it goes down to zero, so the maximum is about 20.8. 20 so let's see which one. Okay, so I think what I had it was all the way to the left, meaning that this was with the wrong dial. 20.8. So I wonder if I just add a higher resistance would that be good enough? What do the other things do? Let's try V center, also move it all the way to the side. Although I see it has some, this one has some funny business going on. No, I think it's just the glue from the other side. So let's see what this one measures. This one is 10 kilo ohms, I think that is. So if I turn it all the way to the other side, is that also going to zero? 
Yeah, pretty much. So, all right, I might just try to put another resistor in series, which is an absolute bodge, but this will allow me to just test this hypothesis that if I fix it on, if I change the value here to go even further in the range, maybe that's what I'll need. Hmm, let's see. I'll give that a shot and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, so the monitor is back on the table because I really started doubting my approach. And uh, well, turns out if you just Google for NEC Multisync 1401 service manual, the first hit is exactly that. And uh, with that, I found that there are some controls on the board that uh, are used in calibration. So I think that actually makes a lot more sense than starting to, you know, just solder resistors. I don't even know if that would have worked, but um, it certainly felt not a smart approach. So the gloves are back. Um, and um, from what I can tell in the service manual, which uh, I can show you on the screen, um, well, it won't be legible, but there are controls which I think will hide behind this thing. So let's try to take it off, but first I'll go and get my hidden Picasso another go. Where did the pen go? There it is. So the back shield, I guess I will call this, has kind of this shape. I mean, you don't really have to do it well, it's just for yourself to remember which screw is actually the one that you mean and often you have stuff like this where there are screws next to each other but you know I'll have to take out this one but not that one because that is in the chassis below so I use an O marking uh, I use an O to indicate that this screw will not come out on this thing but the X next to it will come out so same here and yeah and with that, I should be able to get going. Is that one too large? No, it fits perfectly. Oops. Yeah, these gloves really don't help your precision. Yeah. All right. Nice and steady. There's that. Yeah. Okay, this is actually very tricky. Let's hope that the control is just easily accessible. And okay, I need to move this out of the way. It is really that much harder if there's a camera in the way, and I'm probably still doing a terrible job at keeping things in frame, but that's the best I can do right now. Okay, just a little bit dusty on the back, but I mean, no surprises here. This goes into the case. All right, so what are we looking at here? Ah, I think. I realize that I probably didn't need to take this off because I mean, this is the neck board and this also has controls. There are a bunch of controls actually, as you might see, you see these, uh, oh, I should have, sorry. This keeps turning. Let's try that again. So yeah, you can see that I did not screw tight the right thing. So third time, you can see these adjustable resistors and I think these are for voltages and RGB intensity and whatnot, but I have no plan on fiddling that with that, but I see this slit here because I can see some controls looking through here. So if I turn this a bit, yeah, I think there you can start to see, let me lower this a bit. You can see these poking through here. Right, and yeah, these are a bunch of adjustable 
thingamabobs. Now, are these the ones that I wanted? Uh, so, I guess here's where it gets a bit challenging because um, this service manual, uh, well, you'll get a terrible view of this. But this service manual actually shows a lot of the components. But these are like black and white scans. They're very hard to read. A lot of fidelity is lost, even if you zoom in. Uh, I don't even know which board that is that I'm looking at, though I think this is the anode cap. So which board is that coming from? Is that the one on the bottom? That would be quite annoying. So you can see here there are a bunch of controls right next to each other. And I do not yet see where this is. Um, I hope it's not buried under any of the other boards. <laughs> But I don't actually let me get a light. All right, let's go back to this and take you with me on the tour. So we can see three here, four actually. There's one on top there, though in the manual, there is a bunch more. Actually, there are these tra transformer looking things, so I'll just. There are a bunch of... No, I don't think that's the board that I'm looking at. Because this one has a bunch of... Transformer-looking things. Which I cannot find here. Uh, well, I hope that these controls are supposed to be used for adjustments. So I would hope that they don't make them particularly hard to find. Maybe I need to take the top cover off. get access to them, but I really hope it's not the board on the bottom because that is buried quite well in there. Now I'm starting to think, is it all the way at the front below the CRT? Oh, I see. I guess this is the board that I'm looking at, which is at the bottom of the case. But that means the controls should be here on this side. Huh, okay, so that is interesting. So, somewhere here? How do I even get to that? There's all this stuff in the way. Maybe from the bottom? Glove back on. Beard out of the way. Let's see what happens. Turn this on. That extra stuff from. Though, how would you know anyone? How would you start now tuning it like this? I mean, no, that's a board. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay. Oh, I'm an idiot. Well, that's no news. But, look at that, I did not need to take the shield off. I mean, see that slot? And in there, if I had a light, ta-da! Those are the ones that I'm interested in. And, uh, alright, so I can tune it from the side. If but I need some plastic tool to manipulate this because I'm not poking around in this. I think the power supply sits on top of this. So I'm not going to just blindly stab the inside of this thing. But okay, I guess that means I can put that back in there. And uh, actually I can probably... All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'll reconnect this and install it back. And uh, then I'll see which control is the one that I want to be poking at. 
and then I'll see how far it's dialed and whether it has any more um, play into the direction that I think it needs to go. So that's what I'll be doing next. Just before I continue, I'll reinstall this shield and I thought, you know, I'll do it off camera because there's nothing interesting about it, but maybe there is actually. So you see with these screws, which are uh, self-threading, I guess you call them, um, if you install them, especially in plastic, if you just the, put them to the hole and then start screwing, you might cut a new thread. But how you probably want to install them, especially in plastic, because that stuff's brittle and can break, is you turn it uh, counterclockwise in the loosening direction until you hear a click. And that means it now fell into its old thread. And if you now turn it clockwise to fasten it, it should go with very little resistance like this one, just because you're reusing the old thread. Otherwise, if you do this two or three times without reusing the old thread, at some point you'll have chewed out this hole too much that the screw will no longer um, grab. So again, clonk, and now super easy. And the last one. And if in doubt, just keep going. There we go. And now, peasy, peasy. That's that. Uh, actually, I did not fasten this one all the way. All right. Um, now back to the panel. So basically, I have to readjust all these pins, and you can't see anything because my hands are in the way. But uh, I guess. Oh, first need to re-screw it back onto this thing. Okay, I'll quickly, since now I have all the controls out of the way, I'll use some Windex, as it's called in the US, window cleaner to get rid of a little bit of gunk that I didn't manage to remove last time. Because now it's just too easy. Before that, there was always the danger of just basically breaking off the tiny controls and I had to be really careful, but now I can really go to town on this. And yeah, no longer it makes a giant difference, but you know, it is satisfying to just get it out and uh, well there's not much left of this but make sure we don't have any liquid residue on the bottom I guess no one cares about this but now the top yeah I guess we can call that clean No longer exactly looks like it's 30 years old. Which way the LEDs go this way? All right, and now here, for example, this is now screwing into plastic, and here it is particularly important to do the same thing. So, talk, yeah, and there's hardly any resistance. I like to just like screw them just to the point where it becomes tight so I can first add all of them. And then once they're all nearly in, I'll give them another round of fastening. Whoops, fastening them fully. This one, I'm not quite sure whether I got it correctly. That one had a bit more resistance than I wanted, but oh well. That camera angle is terrible, I'm sorry for that.
Yeah, all right. Moves freely. All right. So this first, I'm going to reconnect. Zzz. The question is so I think they're all aligned nicely. Can I place this further? Just so we have a chance to see maybe at least something. Well, it's pretty much okay. So it felt weird, but the broad part goes like this. Maybe I should start here. Come on. It's always the last connector that you reconnect that doesn't go as easy as the rest, but satisfying click. All seems good. Where's that bezel here? I think the screws. One fell down, but I think the screws are the same. Well, actually, one is a tad longer than the other one. And of course, I've, but well, it doesn't really matter. So, even though I waffled on about, you know, always drawing it, I didn't pay attention when I took it off. So, yeah, try not to do that. Where does it actually go? I need to poke my head in the middle. Whoops, there. Okay. Oh, actually, doesn't seem like there is a thing. Oops, excuse me. Doesn't seem like it has a really dedicated slot. It just basically, I guess, it's controlled by this thing, which acts as a spacer. All right, so where was this connected? Like this, it's along the bottom. Yeah. It's often so much easier to get things off and get them on again, right? Very surprising. Okay, so this tab has to catch somewhere. I can see that, that there is a marking here, so yeah, that feels quite right. Ugh, nasty sound, but I guess this is from, there's some tape there. Oh, yeah, right. I'm stupid. Oh, also this was kind of like this, including the... All right, there we go. The holes line up. Which was the slightly longer screw. I think this one, this will go on the front because there's just even less. Ooh. Come on. I can just fix the first one. All right. That nearly in, and I hope it'll stop flopping around. Where is the screw hole? There. First try. <clears throat> All right, so now we can lower this again. 
Because now I guess the real challenge is to fiddle with these things without getting electrocuted and also having an image on the screen. So I'll refer back to the service manual and um, yeah, I'll figure this out and then I'll come back to the camera. I don't think I'll be able to show this. All right, so here's how I envision this to go. Uh, I've reassembled everything or like the cover of the monitors off. I've taken this tiny screwdriver that I have aimed for the right control, which is I in the service manual, the first of three horizontal center or position dials. I've reconnected the monitor to my computer down there. So it displays a picture that is using the full screen and uh, I've turned the monitor on but the power socket is turned off such that I should be able to basically turn on the monitor, adjust this control, let me get my glove and then I only need to turn on the power socket on the plug extender so I don't need to touch anything of the you know now partially exposed electronics in the back and hopefully this will tell me anything about whether I can actually tune this in so let me turn on the power to the monitor and hopefully no smoke okay let's see did I already ruin anything all right there's the thing. Yeah, so the control is here. So very carefully. It's now at maximum. Hmm, that's really bad. So it's not at maximum position. So maybe that's the control that has failed. But I think, well, if that's the case, that probably requires much more disassembly and maybe soldering stuff that I don't really want to get too close to. So I might call it a day for this because, I mean, I made it a tiny bit better, as you might be able to see. Now, at least the image is no longer cut off. Ooh, that's glitchy. Ooh, is that because the radiation from the monitor? Holy crap, okay, maybe these monitors... <laughs> okay, because I noticed the microphone picking up a hum. And if I go here... Okay, I guess uh, maybe I shouldn't be sitting in front of this monitor for too long. Because <laughs> uh, if it's not good for the electronics, Surely is good for me, right? All right, well, that's sad, but uh, at least I made it a bit better. It's now no longer cut off. And if I ever figure out how to get an EGA signal in there, maybe then I'll see, maybe there it's fine because there are three different controls for centering. So, um, or that's the last thing that I might actually try. I'll turn it off now. And then I'll get the screwdriver into the next control, which I think I fiddled with control I, which is the first H center. And there are two more to the right of it, M and N. And in the instructions, I think, what what is CGA? I think CGA is actually a 15 kilohertz signal, right? Which I think is the second dial so it instructs you to er, to center it first with a 30 kilohertz signal 
then with a 22 kilohertz signal and then with a 15 kilohertz signal since i don't have the first two handy okay so maybe i screwed it up by dialing this thing and i should actually have dialed the sub h center 2 which i think is the one let's see vr553 one over so here's what i'll do i'll try to just turn it back the way it was so is that still in there yeah I'll turn it back on oh wow all the electronics when i turn this thing on really go wonky so i guess there is the reason they had all these like um you know standards for reduced emissions and shit all right so i guess i just turned this back to what it was since i don't have a plastic tool i i'm doing this really slow like on and off but i don't want to have any chance of me you know short circuiting the monitor or you know even worse getting hurt myself so now i moved it one further to the back let's see hopefully this does more i have no idea what to expect oh wait a second oh yes look at that That looks brilliant. Actually, now I think what I should do is turn this. Uh, the gloves really make it hard to twist these tiny controls on the top, but. Yeah, look at that range. So I shall center this. What does that even get out of alignment, I wonder? Why is this also off? Okay, so maybe there are a couple more that I need to tune. Because now the vertical alignment is also off. Or maybe these things are all crusty and me touching one has... All right, but we're getting somewhere. Rejoice! Okay, so now I really don't want to screw this up. looks good to me maybe if i jiggle it a bit it gets less scratchy all right off uh really hurts to like turn it on and off a million times but okay and then now the which one did I want? The vertical size. What is it called? It's uh, H center. Is there also V center? Okay. Can I? Let's let's turn it on again. Can I actually? center the monitor or the image with the control on top i mean if i can i don't really care if it's if the control is not in the middle actually now it looks perfect what happened i guess i don't have to understand this I can even now make it wider Oops, wrong dial. Okay, I guess this is plenty good. <laughs> Can I actually see what I'm doing? Yeah. All right. I quite like this. So let's see. We go to the color bars. Brilliant. Well, that's actually what I wanted to get to. 
Well, I'm quite happy with that. Now let's see whether I can actually get the screwdriver out there without misadjusting it. Off. Oh, the camera frequency for some reason. I guess. And Yes, there we go. I don't know why the frame rate has dropped now. Maybe it got annoyed by being blasted by the electron beam, but I think this is a very nice looking picture. Excellent. All right, so I guess I can button this up and uh, yeah, meet you again once it's fully back to its glory. Everything's put back together. I've brought the grid case up to the desk so we can have them side by side. So let's see whether the magic is still in there. And hopefully it shall be centered and nice. Sweet. This, I'm really liking this. So lesson learned, if it's old and crusty, maybe it's just a bit of corrosion that has befallen the device. Perfect. Yeah, now the DOS prom is at the right side. I wonder whether I really messed up the VGA align uh, EGA alignment now but there is no way for me to test this so for now this has to be it at least now i know that it's very easy to adjust the monitor just from by taking the case off and then adjusting the dials on the right hand side and this service manual is really helpful i'll add a link to it on bitsavers we're downloaded without any nasty ads and whatnot so that was really cool Okay, so even though I went down a couple of wrong ideas, I hope you enjoyed this and I certainly am happy that the monitor is now back to its former glory. And uh, yeah, have a good one.